name is Marisa, I'm 22 and I study International Tourism Management at Robert Gordon University in Aberdeen, Scotland, and I'm a solo tourist. One of my most recent trips was travelling alone for a month around the States by public transport, and I loved it, but I also saw some changes within my confidence and I just felt like I grew as a person, and I just wondered if that happens to other solo tourists as well. So when I did some research, I found a lot on solo tourism, but most of it was focused on gender safety and the negative outcomes of solo tourism, such as loneliness, dangers, and wanted attention, as well as the stigma behind solitude, for example, eating at a restaurant alone, but not many specifically linking solo tourism to confidence. Oxford Dictionary defined confidence as the feeling you can trust, believe in, and be sure about the abilities or good qualities of someone, and believe in your own ability to do things and be successful. So I decided to interview people who had been a solo tourist at least once and I did not focus on gender, age or country of origin and I intended to explore if stepping outside their comfort zone by being a solo tourist has any impact on their confidence and generally personal growth. So first up, Copenhagen. I was looking for some escapes from the common life, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, until now, I think I've been doing some, maybe between 10, 15 solo travels. I was trying to ask to a couple of very close friends if they wanted to, to join me in this adventure. I was going to go for five days hiking in the mountains close to where I live in Italy, on the Alps. And uh, they couldn't, they were working, so I didn't want to renounce to it. And I thought that it was also going to be an interesting experience to just go on my own. So yeah, I just did it. I did have a couple of interviews planned in Paris, but unfortunately the participants cancelled last minute. But instead I just explored the city and flew back to Scotland to find new interviewees. And my first like trip, um, like proper trip was to Dublin in my second year. And that was just because, I don't know, I, I just wanted to go, but then I didn't really have anyone to go with. So I was just like, yeah, just go by myself. I've been traveling for the last three years on my own around the world and yeah it kind of just happened unintentionally it just so happened that I took off on a short backpacking trip and then that ended up turning into what it is now where I'm like yeah current currently just living full-time on the road it started off as being something that I was forced into because there was nobody else at that stage wanting to go the places that I wanted to go or do the things I wanted to do and then it became very much more of a choice. I don't have much experience but I did go to Hawaii by myself. I just had the most amazing time with my best friend and I in my mind I thought it was never gonna end and then one day it was just like dude I just can't anymore I got enough money to get home and that's it and I'm like damn okay so this is really happening and I was like stuck in a predicament where I didn't know if I wanted to keep doing it by myself even though everybody I had met in hostels or whatnot was all traveling by themselves anyway. So I was just like, no, you know what? I'm just gonna stay on the road. I didn't really think about it before I went. It was more other people telling me like, oh, you need to be careful, like watch out for this. That like, it didn't scare me, but it just made me feel a bit like uncomfortable and uneasy. Petrified, but then I'm, I mean, I am absolutely petrified of everything. It, Cause having a very vivid imagination, um, you know, I am, and plus needing to plan for absolutely everything that could go wrong. Um, so naturally, part of you is thinking that this will happen. I was not really afraid, but my mother was very much. Mm -hmm. um, got to the, the part where you collect your baggage, um, it didn't come off <laughs> because they um, were having strikes at Helsinki Airport, so um, they didn't have enough people to put the bags on the plane so mine got stuck at Helsinki airport um, and when you're in a country that you don't speak the language of it's quite scary so um, yeah that was quite an experience for the first time but you learn a lot from experiences like that. The, the first time I went to Austria by myself they would not let me sit at a table by myself so they put me for breakfast and the evening meal beside a honeymoon couple. You can imagine how welcome I was. 
<laughs> and how I really didn't want to be there, but the culture was very much that one person sitting on their own was looked wrong. How would you describe the phrase stepping outside your comfort zone? Ah, uh, stepping outside your comfort zone is a requirement to pursue big dreams and big goals. And for me, that's just what a big motto for like in my life because all the really really great things in my life have happened when I stepped outside my comfort zone. My comfort zone is here being surrounded by my friends so having to go abroad by yourself um, it does take a lot of courage and um, you are doing everything that you you haven't before. Yeah modern invention. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably describe it as um, freaking it but forcing yourself to do it. I don't know it means something different for everybody that's the problem like I I didn't for me it's kind of it's a lot different because like so I used to jump out of airplanes for when I was in the military I, I was a paratrooper and I have 58 jumps but I'm absolutely terrified of um, of heights right so it was like I jumped every time and that was be was stepping way beyond my comfort zone. Like stepping out of my comfort zone was just putting the parachute on before we even, just knowing we were jumping was stepping out of my comfort zone. Apart from sitting in my house with all the doors barred, the cats beside me and a book in my hand and a drink beside me, um, that's probably the only real comfort zone that I've got. Single. I'm 76 years old, stay alone, prepped uh, to go on the Appalachian Trail, which is uh, 2,189 miles. I walked uh, 1,409 miles in 99 days, carrying three and a half stone baggage weight. and lost over two stone in weight. I thoroughly enjoyed every minute. And in your opinion, do you believe that by being a solo tourist is stepping outside your comfort zone? Um, well, maybe not under every single aspect because in my, my comfort zone for some parts now is also being on my own, you know, and doing mm -hmm. things as I want. But on the other side, yeah, it's because you have to, uh, to plan every, everything on your own and you have to be ready to face what is unexpected. Things can go wrong and you will have to figure it out by yourself, right? Like with me, with every trip, something goes wrong. There's like rarely any trip where it's all going smooth. So if you are by yourself, you have to figure it out. And there isn't anyone, there isn't a choice. I mean, maybe there are people who can help you and stuff, but you are like the first person to deal with it. Yes, you're outside your comfort zone, but then what is a comfort zone? You know, are you going to stay in your mother's womb the entire life? And what benefits do you think that solo tourism has on an individual's personal growth? I think making your own decisions is, mm -hmm. is a big push to anybody's morale. Uh -huh. Making your own, rather than asking, having somebody make them for you. Do your own. Even though it doesn't matter if they're right. Even though um, when I was walking I get lost, just backtrack, make your own decisions, you know? Mm -hmm. Get your own, if you get into trouble, get yourself out of trouble. That, that's, make your own decisions. Solo travel has made me feel empowered to make my own decisions. It's made me feel strong, it's improved my confidence. Um, it's not easy to just go up to strangers and, uh, and make friends. For me personally, traveling solo means a personal growth. Uh, it definitely definitely kind of opens your horizons. It makes you think of different cultures differently, of different people differently. And since you are by yourself, you just absorb all the elements and the whole spectrum around yourself. Definitely personal growth. I feel like I've become a lot more confident since doing that by myself and seeing how others reacted when I told them I, I've been to Hawaii by myself or I was going to Hawaii. They were all like shocked that I would do that and they were like really proud of me so it made my like confidence grow it's like yeah, I can do this. Oh so much personal growth in so many ways and um, of course 
confidence I mean obviously because you you're like yeah if I can like travel to like a different continent by myself then I can do you know x y and z um but I would also say it's a lot of I feel like you you learn to really value yourself and like your own perceptions and your own I know just you just learn to listen to what mm -hmm. you want and you put yourself first say confidence mm -hmm. I, I've got a lot more self-confidence from traveling alone uh, time management um, organization because you're in charge of your own stuff like you can't lose your passport you need to know what flights you're getting on you need to organize your buses I think also people skills like you have to you have to step outside your comfort zone to be able to go and talk to other people if you want to one make friends if you want to know the best places to eat to what extent do you agree or disagree that traveling solo has an impact on someone's self-confidence and why uh, I mean all the yes yes <laughs> <laughs> all the yes um yeah again because you show yourself what you're capable of you show yourself that you are able to overcome challenges that you are able to step outside your comfort zone you are able to do things despite being afraid it makes you believe in yourself more uh, it makes you believe that you can do it you don't need anyone else to rely on so it's it's a really confidence booster for me when you travel on your own and when you're making all your own decisions and kind of you're creating your own journey that way most of the time it will be a success and you'll have a great time and so i think when you look back at that it's a huge confidence booster because you realize i made those decisions it's because of me and only me that um this trip and that, that adventure went so well because you were the one making those choices before i went out to australia i was very not shy, but I wouldn't put myself out there in situations. Like, looking back, like now, I would never have gone for like president of a club. I would never probably be doing this because I wouldn't have confidence to sit in front of a camera. And now I'm just like, oh, I don't care, it's fine. When I was in Australia especially, like I, I hitchhiked by myself for um, four months across the whole country without anyone. And so after an experience like that, um, yeah, I was a confident girl, but doing that, like, that, that was pushing me outside of my comfort zone. That's not something I had ever done before. So I think it changed me in just realizing the potential I had and kind of the barriers I had, I had within myself that I didn't even know existed. I think the, the, the main thing is um, my self-confidence is good because I went back on further solo holidays after the Berlin Horror Show. Um, so yeah, I think it's done a world of good for my self-confidence um, and like I don't only just do solo holidays, I now do once as well with my friends just so I can compare them and I think solo holidays is definitely really good for your confidence. I am naturally really like quite introverted and I'm like quiet I think like when I when I would go into a group of people I'm like not the person to like oh here I am and I'm like entertaining everyone and I'm like talking to like everyone um, but I feel like when you travel solo I, I to be fair I also like to take solo travel time as time for myself and I still am sometimes not talking to people but especially with studying abroad and stuff like you have to talk to people and you learn to talk to people and I now know that I can talk to people and so I think that's the biggest one that I'm like more open and I create connection and I actively start conversations um, if I want to but again I think it's also when you travel solo you can also just be by yourself and that's fine like there's a difference between being alone and lonely like it doesn't mean if you travel alone that you are lonely well you really have to push yourself mm -hmm. because there's no one else to do it for you like if you don't know how to get somewhere like obviously you can use your phone but it's easier just to ask someone and everyone that I like asked for help they were really helpful <laughs> and they told me and they like gave me recommendations of stuff to do and I think if I was at home I, I don't just go up to people in the streets and ask how to get here but there I felt more comfortable to do it. I literally get held up in five ten minute conversations here five minute conversations there with the dude selling mangoes just just learning so much about like their daily life and what 
like the struggles that they go through and like I feel that I learn a lot more about myself so I definitely get a lot more you definitely get a lot more confident going to America as well even though I was with a group of people it let me realize that I could do that because I've already done something by myself so while analyzing the data from the interviews, I found seven themes that revealed the interviewee's opinions and experiences about stepping outside their comfort zone and being a solo tourist. The participants mentioned that at first they wanted to go on holiday but just didn't have anyone to go with and therefore it was not their choice to become a solo tourist. But despite it not being their choice at first, they now choose to go on solo holidays and enjoy it. So now regarding the first time going on a solo holiday, some participants mentioned that they were scared, but others said that they weren't scared, but their friends and family were when they found out about it. This can be linked to solo tourism perceptions, such as the gender dangers, the unwanted attention, as well as being stigmatized as lonely. However, it was pointed out that going on holiday on their own, despite the fear or doubt, made them feel more confident as they proved to themselves what they are capable of. This can be linked to solo tourism and stepping outside the comfort zone. So when it comes to this phrase, it means something different for everyone. For some, it's just leaving the house. For others, traveling to a new country or jumping out of the plane despite being afraid of heights. Although meaning something different for each of the participants, stepping outside one's comfort zone was viewed as always something positive with benefits and linked to solo tourism. Solo tourism played a huge role in their decision-making confidence. A person's decision-making process is supported by self-confidence as well as trust in their ability to make the right decision. A solo tourist can come across many situations while traveling that require them to decide and trust their ability to do so. Little things like deciding what accommodation to stay in or which restaurant to eat in to things such as deciding if a situation is safe or not and if you should leave that situation. It can also be deciding how you're going to get to the airport or the bus station and if that will give you enough time to not miss your transport. Dealing with problems alone is a big part of being a solo tourist and can be closely linked to being outside the comfort zone. However, being alone can mean that the individual has to solve the problem alone. This can be losing hotel keys or the phone or getting lost while hiking. It can also be missing a flight and having to stay in the destination for a longer period. There's a lot that could go wrong on a holiday, but by solving these problems, either on their own or asking for help, a solo tourist can prove to themselves what they are capable of and therefore increase their self-confidence. Meeting people was a key finding and participants said that it did boost their confidence while they were on solo holidays. Some solo tourists don't find it as easy to talk to strangers and make friends, so that is definitely something that's outside their comfort zone. It was not so so easy for me sometimes to just go out and talk to people randomly, you know? But this happens a lot when you're traveling solo. There are different types of loners who desire different levels of social interactions, and by being a solo tourist, it can be easier to control that. What solo traveling makes so beautiful for me is this, this choice. And finally, the last thing I noticed was that 100% of the participants express encouragement and recommend solo tourism. So the information I got both from secondary research and the interviewees said that being a solo tourist can have positive impacts and benefits on their confidence. So for someone who wants to travel solo but is maybe afraid to, I say you literally just have to go for it. I would literally say do it. Just do it. Do it. Just go. <laughs> don't really think about it too much. Just go. Just do it. Honestly, don't... I would say to them, don't dwell on the negatives or things that you read online and you're like, oh, but that's happened to them, maybe I shouldn't do it. Everyone's story is different and you're never going to know what your story is unless you just do it. It is really daunting to do, but um, once you get that flight booked and get your accommodation books and you go there you, you won't regret it. There's always going to be some element of fear there I think but once you do it it's fine. Know that everyone is afraid and um, know that fear is just an instinct. It's uh, such a good experience you learn so much about yourself um, I would highly recommend it to anyone. Acknowledging that being like 
hmm, am I actually gonna die from this? Probably not. Because my attitude is you're a, you're a long time deed. You're dead for a long time, so you might as well enjoy yourself whilst you're here. It's your life and you know, like, if you don't try, you will never ever like it or not. It's like ripping a band-aid. It might feel super uncomfortable at the beginning, um, and that's that's not, um, like, you wouldn't be the only one. I'm sure for lots of people it's something that is, it is quite scary. From the planning to actually the doing, it, there's a lot to think about. Um, but by just doing it, you'll realize that a lot of people are doing it as well. And so, like I said before, even though you're, you're a solo traveler, you're not the only solo traveler and there's actually quite a big community um, of support within that. Don't be afraid, buy a plane ticket and just go and it's going to be the best time of your life. And yes, you know, there are masses of benefits of being on your own, though a lot of people don't see them.